this one is gonna be on what my job is, everything about the job. So I've had a few questions over the last over the last year that I've been working for the company about everything that I do here, if I have extra duties, what kind of things we do, if we can get off our schedules, things like that. So I'm gonna cover hopefully everything about my job in this in this video today. So first, um, it's probably important to start with how I got here. And so I feel like I touched upon this in the audition one, but it's important to just go over it again quickly. I uh, signed up to Entertainers Worldwide. I was auditioning a lot at the time. And so I wasn't really getting many places. I, I was getting to final stages or contracts were falling through and things like that. So, uh, and I was finding it a bit hard to find the kind of like free ads for cruise ships as well, as weird as that sounds. So I ended up signing up for Star Now and Entertainers Worldwide, which are both subscription-based things. It's a tiny bit annoying because you're, you're just paying to click a tab and get the access to that information, but it's fine because that's what allowed me to do it. So I signed up, then I saw that Carnival were auditioning, but they were doing all online auditions, which, is, which was great for me at the time. So I applied to the company and the thing I really liked about Carnival's audition process was they didn't just kind of like ask you for all of your strengths, everything that you were good at. They also asked about how you were as a person and what you think you could personally work on as a person. Uh, I thought that was really cool uh, because a lot of the stuff we do here is you're with people all the time and with guests or band or anything like that. So I thought that was really cool. And so then I sent off my audition tapes and things like that. I completed the application. And then about two weeks later, they got in touch to tell me that I'd got the job. So that was, that was great. And then around two months later, I think in that time they were, we were back and forth because they had to send me stuff about my visas and they sent me a letter of employment to take to the visa office in London to get my US transit visas and my CD1 and all those things that you need to work on a ship. So they should, if, if you're in that, this position and you're waiting, then, uh, then they'll be in touch about that. And so they got in touch, I did all my visas, I did everything they asked, all my medicals. And so then about two weeks out from the ship, uh, my MD got in touch. I found out that I was going to the Carnival Sensation. So the MD reached out and mentioned how many songs we'd be doing and sent me uh, all the information I needed with regards to that and sent me a list of the songs and uh, a thing with the uh, big Dropbox file with all the charts or most of the charts. Uh, the charts that I didn't have, I was really lucky. I asked friends um, who were doing the ships and they had all the supplementary charts and then I also learned how to write my own charts as well. So that was a big, a big help with that. But about two weeks out, they got in touch to tell me uh, yeah, where I was going and who my MD was. My MD reached out and gave me a list of the songs we were doing. It was about 200 and 10 or 220 songs we were doing. Um, so obviously I started to prep for that then and I started to pack and do all those sorts of things for when I was leaving. So the way that Carnival work it is that you get sent your flights and then you get sent to Fort Lauderdale, uh, Davie in Florida. They have this huge, gorgeous uh, warehouse-like um, state-of-the-art studios where they have sound stages for the performers and they have uh, like a load of rehearsal rooms for the band so that at any one time they could have maybe 10 or 15 ships worth of musicians and playlist performers at the studios so they'll all be rehearsing together and it creates a really good sense of community within the company there. And then you basically live next door for the, for the duration of your, of your rehearsal time. The rehearsal times can sometimes vary so last time I was there for a month, four weeks, and this time I was there for five and a half weeks, but that was only because I was there over the Christmas break. So it meant the time, we had to make up the time we had off over Christmas in order to get, get prepped for the ship. But yeah, you'll usually go with Carnival for a month uh, at the studios, get prepped, do all your songs, nine to five rehearsals. Uh, you get one day off every week. Uh, and so then you live in the apartments next door, with the, usually with the band or with someone with the techs or things like that. Uh, and yeah, you're you're working almost every day to get those things together. And so by the time you leave the ship, you'll have you should have about 200 to 220 songs ready to go. So Carnival uh, again are, are really great in the sense that they will hire you as an individual musician. You do not need to be hired as part of a band, which was perfect for me. I I, I didn't have any bands that I was working with exclusively at home to go on the ship with. And I know that can that can also be a real a real faff because. People's timings in life are all different. You might have someone who's only available for three months. You might have someone who's only available for a month. 
or someone who's not ready for five months. Whereas the, the nice thing is, is that you can, when you're ready, you can apply and you can go and they'll hire you and then they'll put you into a band, which is, which is perfect. So that, that was, that was really uh, a really cool thing for me to do. So yeah, obviously one of the biggest parts of the job, um, in case you didn't get it from the last things that I was saying, was reading. I get that question a lot and that's the question I had pretty much all that was in my head before was how good of a reader you have to be because I was going to auditions where they were putting a putting a brand new song in front of you with a chart and asking you to play to it and and to be honest that was my worst nightmare I hated doing that and so as horrible as it is and if you're in this position and you're not the strongest reader or sight reader the only remedy is like I touched upon in the audition episode is to is to just read as many charts as you can. Read as many charts, get your hands on them, mark them, do them every day, read them before you go to bed. Uh, that's what I did. And then if, if you can do, do that until you're good enough to get the job. And then on the job, you will learn twice as fast and twice as quick and twice as good how to read, how, how to read quickly and things like that. So now it doesn't bother me if someone put a new chart in front of me or anything like that. Whereas before, that was my biggest that was my biggest fear ever of going to an audition was someone handing you that because I'd had so many where I, I didn't get it right and things like that. But it's a very heavy reading gig, as you can imagine. Unless you're coming with a band and, and you know 200 songs off, off the top of your head and you can get them spot on, I mean, that, that that's almost unheard of, but that, that's great for you if that's how good your memory is, but mine's certainly not that good and so, uh, your reading has to be to a real high standard because you're getting new charts all the time. You know, the way that you work the charts and things like that, the way that you're in the rehearsal room and you know, you might be adding things, taking things out and so your comprehension has to be really quite high when it comes to your theory and your reading and things like that. And unfortunately, I don't think there's a way around it of coming to the ships as a musician, as a band musician and not having that reading ability. Uh, it's just, there's just too much of it for you not to have, for you not to be able to do it. So that's that's one really big thing, yeah, to tick off is, is your reading needs to be, needs to be really shit hot. Also, because of the amount of material, imagine how many genres of music you're gonna be going through in it, within those songs as well. Within those 220 songs, you could be going through every genre imaginable. And also, a lot of the times on these ships, there are themed sets. So you'll have a, well, last night we had a classic rock set, Tomorrow we've got an 80 set. Tonight we've got variety and variety. You could go through five or six different genres in one set uh, within different songs. So one song could be reggae, one song could be pop, the next song could be classic rock. Then you might have a jazz song, you know? So it's, you, you have to be able to kind of keep up with those sorts of things as well. You're going through so many genres so quickly. So my advice there would be play along and you know play along to as many different songs as you can and, uh, and as many different charts as you can with those songs and that should stand you in good stead for, for when you come to the ship and when you start to rehearse and you're getting this wealth, this almost overwhelming amount of material, you know, like I'll, I'll be honest, I didn't, I, I was in the mind frame that I didn't think I was going to be good enough because they sent 220 songs and the most I got together before I got to the studios was maybe a hundred because I was really lucky that I'd played a lot of them, um, you know, throughout just playing over the years and then but the biggest thing to do is just put the work in, put the work in. When you get there, hit the ground running, go early, stay late, stay up late, you know, accept that you're not gonna get much sleep um, for the first few few weeks. Uh, and even when you get on board the first few weeks, because you'll still be tweaking things. But yeah, work hard, work your ass off, outwork everyone else, and, and that will also put you in a really good position because you'll, go into it and this is how I went into it I went into it with the with the ethos of I want to be always the hardest hardest worker and I'll, I'm, and that's how I'll get where I want I may not be the most gifted or I may not be the best reader or things like that but I was going to outwork everyone else and so that that has really held me held me in in good stead here uh, is to is to to work like that with that work ethic so once your month is done at the studios, you've had a good month, you've rehearsed and things like that, and uh, you've enjoyed your last piece of uh, land for, for the time being, the contracts are usually seven months with Carnival, so you're a month rehearsals and then six months on the ship. That's how they usually structure them. Every music, I think if you're, 
if you're a piano bar soloist or acoustic soloist or the duo string trios anything like that I don't know what their contract lengths are but but for the band musicians ours are usually seven months one month they're in studios and six months on the ship so you enjoy that last piece of uh, solid land for for that month and then they either fly you to the ship because the ships obviously go from all over the world so they either fly you there uh, I haven't had to do that yet which is quite nice because you just pack your bags in a car and they drive you to the port my first port was out of Miami uh, which was which was amazing and then this port is out of Tampa so both in Florida so we just drove from the studios and the studio apartments uh, and came to the ship so that was really cool but some people fly uh, which is a bit more of a hassle because then you have you have all your bags and anything you've accumulated at the studios things like that but I've been lucky with that so yeah they fly you or drive you or you know transport you to the ships then you get on the ship so this is when you're on you're on the ship so you will play the first night this has happened twice now you play the first, very first night uh, and so you try and hit the ground running like that so the first week is just chaos so you're finding your room you're having to settle in there you're having to find your way around the ship then you're having to play uh, but it's, it's, it's a whirlwind but it's a good whirlwind uh, and like I said you hit the ground running so you don't even have a chance to really think about about you know not being settled or not being comfortable because you're just you're just trying to get on with it every single day and so yeah so now we're on the ship so one of the first things you'll be doing or which is what I've been doing uh, when on my first contract is a lot of training so as you can imagine it's a whole new environment it's completely different to anything you would have been on and any experience I would have had I've, I've been on cruise ships uh, with my family but obviously you've never worked them so you have no idea uh, the safety elements on board things like that so there's a lot of training to do when you first when you first get on board and so you you do all of that you spend a lot of time doing those sorts of things and getting all of the um, security trainings and stuff done and fire awareness all those sorts of things all those safety things uh, and so yeah that's one of the biggest things you'll you do when you when you first get here so one of the biggest questions that's always always asked by guests and by uh, friends and things like that is how many extra duties we have and, and what they are so we do have extra duties that that would be correct when people assume that we on this ship and on every ship with the company I like I, again I don't know how it works with with the other companies but on this company we do the guest safety briefings so those are just before you leave port you will uh, muster the guests into their master stations near the lifeboats uh, and then talk them through the safety thing so everyone has to be accounted for and then you'll do like life jacket demonstrations and things like that so we help out with those this time I'm a checker so I check people into the muster station you get training on all of this and so that's that's the biggest extra duty you have uh, and that's every import uh, every every first cruise <laughs> can't find the fucking words every first cruise so you, that'll be the only time you'll do it and so uh, yeah that's the biggest one you'll do first uh, we're very lucky the only other two extra duties we have one of them is called on again on this on this company it's called just ask so we help out uh, on so before the guest safety briefing that's when everyone's on board and accounted for uh, before that you will be put on a position rotationally if that's a word don't know if that's a word on rotation uh, on something called just ask and that's when you will stand in the lobby area or wherever the guests are coming onto the ship you'll stand um, in and around there or by the elevators and you'll just be guiding people answering any questions people have about the ship and things like that like I said that's just a few hours every month or so and that's rotational but between there's a fucking word again in between um, you and the other musicians or the just ask I think is everyone on board so uh, so you usually work with people from different departments but it's only a few hours until the, until the guest safety briefing uh, but yeah that's that's just a, a bit of a smaller duty for us then lastly uh, my only other duty apart from those is something called port manning and so I uh, regular cruisers who are watching this might might understand that but basically when we're in port there has to be a certain amount of people still left on the ship for any security or safety reasons which is called port manning so you if you're on port manning it could last a week or a day or i've heard some people say that it lasts half a day and so every every ship is different uh, because every port is different every cruise itinerary is different and so if you're on port manning you stay on the ship you aren't allowed to get off 
because there has to be a certain amount of people left on the ship. And again, that's on a rotation basis so that you won't, you won't be put on it all the time. It'll be like once a month or something like that. And then you just stay on the ship for the day or the week or whatever. Uh, but that's, that's no big deal. So we're very lucky in this department and in this job that we don't have too many extra duties to, to do. Um, and we can kind of concentrate more on, on, on our actual job and what we actually do um, and what we love to do and what we do here. So another one is scheduling. So how long we play for, how, how often we play, how many days off we get, a cruise and things like that. So we talking a lot about this cruise and about what I do and what on my last cruise. My last cruise was a five and a four day itinerary, which which meant that we cruised uh, every five, for five days, then two four days, then a five day. So that was a bit weird because we'd always be back in home port on like really random days. It, so that was that was a bit a bit uh, a bit weird. But it was it was a great time and it was a great cruise. And so this one is seven and nine, and then we have journeys cruises, which are a bit longer. So. Uh, this week we're in the Panama Canal, so this is an eight-day cruise. Uh, but they, this one's a bit varied, but it's a bit longer, which is which is nicer, I think, um, because then you have a bit more structure. You you know you're back in port every Saturday or you know Sunday and then a Saturday, things like that. So I I like I'm I'm really liking this one so far. Uh, so yeah, scheduling. So we usually do four 45-minute sets a night, and then we get one night off either per cruise or because these ones are seven and eight and nine days or you get one every seven eight or nine days it really depends on the itinerary and on um, the scheduling and things like that but yeah four 45 minute sets uh, per night um, and so it's usually around the same time I'm lucky with this one but they're usually at the same time so you can really structure your day and things like that we only have one day where we do the 80s rock and glow party if you follow me on Instagram under Dan Lewis drums you'll see me posting about the rock and glow party it's a glow in the dark 80s deck party that we have here which is which is amazing it's like so much fun to play and and things like that and so then your day will start a bit earlier so your setup you'll have setup times for the deck and things like that but that's usually when the day will vary usually it'll be around 8 p.m. 8 until 12 uh, and so yeah you it's just you get used to it you get used to playing it's a lot of material to play because I know I've got friends at home and I, I used to play um, pub gigs and I still do when I go home and Four 45 minute sets seems like a lot every single night, but you get used to it and it builds a lot of great stamina, great playing stamina, and your playing improves like so quickly at a rate that's like unbelievable. You wouldn't believe until you got here. But yeah, so that's the, uh, that's the schedule that we have. So apart from that, apart from your play times, you can kind of do what you, you can do what you want. So, you know, I usually go to the gym or I, uh, I practice a lot. You know things like that. You just find ways to keep yourself busy throughout the days and things like that. But yeah, until your playtime, you, your your day is kind of your own. Um, which leads me on to my next point of if we can get off and when we can get off and how we get off and things like that. Yes, you can get off. Uh, we get off if you want to. Obviously, unless you're port manning or you have rehearsals or anything that stops you from getting off like that, you can get off in every single port if you want to, um, which is amazing because we go to some of the nicest ports in the world. So yeah, you can get off, you can get off, you have, uh, the, you usually have a back on board time, which is slightly earlier than the, than the guests, just so you, you're not late or you're not, you know, things like that. That's another thing, there's back on board time, so you'll have a certain amount of uh, time in these ports, and they'll be given to you just before you, uh, you get it. They'll be changed every day, they usually will be on your schedule and things like that. So yeah, the schedule is pretty is pretty open for us. It's really nice. We play about four hours a day, and then we we're allowed to get off in the daytimes when we want to. And your day is kind of your own, which is which is fantastic, obviously. And then on the night off, you don't play. So usually we go and watch the show if they're on, or there's other things going on around the ship. We go and watch the other entertainers on board, but or we go for sushi or steak or something like that. So you can really enjoy that night off then. So yeah, that's kind of everything that I wanted to cover. Um, also, just as a last kind of final point is, I usually like to have things to keep me busy on board. Otherwise, as you can imagine, six months on board can, can drag. Um, I'm lucky that you know it hasn't so far and it, ha it didn't on my last contract and I don't think it will on this contract, but if you don't have anything to do, so I usually, like to give myself like little projects. So my last on my last ship, it was about trying to get my hands, uh, my hands and my feet 
in terms of playing up to a really good standard and start to get really in depth with linear drumming um, and things like that. So that was my big project and I upped my practice hours. So I was doing uh, about two hours, which I'm continuing now. I do two hours uh, a day, but just before the sets to kind of wake myself up, wake my brain up, warm up my hands and feet and things like that. And then uh, we do the sets for four hours. So my playing time, is, is up to about six hours, which is great. So I usually give myself uh, little things like that, little projects. So this, the, obviously this, uh, this cruise and this contract is about this series and kind of enlightening people to what we do here and, and how, what the life is like on board uh, and answering any questions people have. But yeah, something to keep you going, something to, to kind of do every day and, and to kind of get on, you know, make the day you know, I'm personally as busy as I can, which is which is what I love to do anyway. But yeah, that's kind of everything. That's everything about the job. If there are any more questions people had, uh, those were kind of the major things people wanted to know about. Um, you know, scheduling, how long we play for, how many days off we get, extra duties, and and so I hope I've covered those um, coherently and things like that. But if you have any more questions, I will be doing a Q and A later in the series. So any questions you have. Uh, message me, comment on this, message me on Instagram, Dan Lewis Drums, or Twitter, Dan Lewis Drums UK, or Facebook, Dan Lewis Drums UK, uh, and I'll, I'll add them to the, to the Q&A, and I'll try and cover them then. But most of the questions I had, I feel like I've, I've hopefully answered in this, in this video. And so, yeah, that's, that's everything I wanted to say, and I'll be uh, excited to do these episodes soon, but thank you so much and i'll see you in the next episode thank you so much for watching uh the feedback's been great thank you very much bye